Hello everyone. I'm here to talk to you about my latest project. So back in 2018, I decided that I wanted to be able to remote control my amplifiers. Um, and I started working on a little project so that I could use my computer to turn the knobs on my amplifiers. Um, and this was a bit of fun, but as ever, other things in life took over and I dropped the idea. Um, and after cleaning out one of the rooms in my house, I found all the bits from that project that I bought. So I've decided to revive that project, but scale it up somewhat. So my plan in this little video series, which I don't know how long it's going to last, how many parts it's going to be. Uh, but my plan is to completely robotize. That's a good word to use. Robotize my uh, home guitar rig. So the intention being is I'll have all my amps, all my pedals, the switching system for the pedals, the order that the pedals can go in, all the knobs on the pedals, everything like that, completely automated by computer, so that I can sit downstairs, turn a knob, and upstairs, it can turn that knob on the pedal. Sounds crazy, right? Well, that's what I'm planning to do, and let's see how far I get. Um, I've already made a start on some of this with the amp, so I'm going to walk through all the the plans and how I see it working so far and show you a little bit about what I've already done. Some might call this a real world Amplitube. If you've ever used Amplitube, it's a piece of software that allows you to get different guitar tones and different pedals and stuff like that, but entirely on the computer. Well, this is like a real world version of that where you can control it on your computer, but it's actually moving the real gear. So um, yeah, exciting stuff. I should point out I'm a guitarist, and I'm a pretty decent computer programmer, but I know very little when it comes to electronics. So this whole thing is going to be a huge learning curve for me. There'll be plenty of mistakes. I make no apology for them. I'm here to learn as well. So if you're watching this, you're thinking, oh, he's doing this wrong. Don't pitch in on the comments and start having a go. Inform me. I want to know what I'm doing wrong because I want to make this work. Um, and I think it could be fun. You know, I'm not trying to sell this on the market as a solution for studios or anything. This is just for something to do during the lockdown. So first things first, what's that? This here is a Raspberry Pi. It's a tiny little computer that runs Linux, but hugely powerful. I mean, we're talking quad core processor. Uh, it's got HDMI out on it. It's got these pins here, which are called the GPIO pins. Uh, it's got USB sockets, a network adapter. I believe it's got onboard Wi-Fi as well. And it powers here with a, um, a USB sort of 5 volt supply. Incredibly powerful machine. And I'm going to be using probably several of these to control the whole thing. Because the great thing about this is you can program them very easily. You can go in use a language like um, Python, because uh, they've got their, their own sort of version of Linux that is the operating system on them, which actually you put on a little memory card and then you boot it up and it's a fully working computer. So in Python, on this computer, you can control turning on and off voltage coming on. I believe it's 29 of these pins, but... Um, that's really, really helpful. Just having a little program that can just turn on and off voltage on the pins, and you'll see why in a minute. So the next thing you need if you want to automate an amp is you need some motors because you need to somehow be able to turn the knobs on the amp. So I bought a load of these uh, motors. These are called stepper motors, um, and they're pretty accurate actually um you can get them to turn in tiny increments i think we're, we're talking you know several several thousand increments um in a full 360 degree rotation uh, i can't remember the exact specs but each of these um have a small controller card which you can connect up in fact let me get one out and show you and you can connect these up to the motor and then connect the data pins here to the Raspberry Pi. And if you put certain voltages across the pins from the Raspberry Pi, so 
connecting these pins to these pins here, you can make this uh, stepper motor turn in whatever direction you want, um, which is great. So for example, I attempted to have a couple of stepper motors turning some knobs on my Marshall JCM 800 and uh, it worked a treat. I've had um, bits of gaffer tape and other bits holding the stepper motors to it. But as a proof of concept, a prototype, it worked. Um, but I thought I'd step up the uh, production a little and uh, I bought myself a 3D printer so I could actually print these little these little adapters here, which when they get put on a motor, can then connect to the knob of a, well, any pot really, any pot that's that size. Um, but that was perfect for my Marshall JCM 800. Um, and then I printed, 3D printed a mounting bracket. Um, there's one missing here, I need to put that in. I think I ran out of motors when I was testing it. But um, if I bring that back and put that on here, you will be able to see that would fit on the front of a marsh lamp. And then all of these cables here would go onto the little controller boards for each motor, which I've designed a rudimentary mounting block for. So you could add on as many controller boards as you need, connect these up, and then connect all of these to the Raspberry Pi and then the Raspberry Pi can send signals to turn the knobs for your amp. Now each motor has four pins that I need to address. And the problem is, is if I've got say six motors that I need to um, control my JCM 800 amp, um, that's gonna be four pins for each of those motors. So anyone who's very quick at maths, and say that six times four is 24. So I'd have to use 24 of these pins on my Raspberry Pi just to control six motors on the amp. Now that's pretty inefficient because when we scale this up to pedals, I mean, some of my pedals have five or six knobs on each. And if I've got seven pedals, you know, I'm gonna be buying three, four amps. I could be buying 10, 12 Raspberry Pis by, by the time I get to the end of this, which um, I definitely don't want to do. So one of the things I want to discuss at the moment is the principle behind addressing. So only one of the motors is ever going to be moving at once. That's a limitation that I'm going to accept. I'm not going to be um, turning multiple knobs at once. I'm only going to be grabbing the mouse on my computer downstairs and, and moving one knob. And therefore, I only need to address one motor at a time. So if I've got, say, three motors, okay, I'm going to draw a circle to represent each motor. And each of those have four data inputs. And I've got a um, Raspberry Pi, which I'm going to put over here and call a Pi. And this has a number of outputs. Well, in theory, because these three motors also require power, I could actually decide which motor I want to talk to by only turning the power on for one of them at a time, which means I could have four pins on my Raspberry Pi and connect pin one to each of these. As you can see, I'm the worst drawer in the world. What I can do is I can make sure that each first pin of these are connected together. So I'm going to draw these out here and connect them all together. I'm going to draw this out here and connect all of them together. So with all of those connected together, I can then connect the Pi and I can have four output pins here which go to these four address lines. But then how do I select each motor? Well, each motor has a power. So if I use a chip, um, such as there's a, there's a chip that I'm considering using that um, has eight inputs or outputs, and another one 
input or output. So these would be uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this one here I'm going to call X. And then we have three inputs here. And basically the signal will go into X and then out of one of these, depending on what the voltages are on these three pins. Or it could be the other way. The signal could come into all of those and then go out via X. So effectively, you're just connecting the circuit. It's just like a, a light switch, but it's a digitally controlled light switch because we've got three pins and depending on the combination of the voltages we put across them, we can choose which of these eight we want to connect to X. Now, I've started numbering at zero and that's for a good reason. So let me explain how we select with the three voltages because that's something that's going to come into play all the way through this project. By putting a different combination of voltages across these three data lines, I want to be able to choose one of eight switches. So to be able to do that, we could just create a little table here and I'll show you how it works. So if I label these A, B and C, and then I create a table here, A, B and C, and I want to be able to generate the number one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. If I have zero volts across all three lines, that's going to be zero, zero, zero. So that's going to be our zero position. If I have zero, zero, but I put five volts on this line, on the C line, that's going to give us our one. If I go zero, five, zero, so I'm putting five volts across the B, it's going to give us our two. And if you continue this process down, five, five, five. So the last one there means voltage on all three data lines. Now, writing out zero and five is actually a kind of a counterintuitive way of thinking about this. Because in computer terms, the amount of voltage that goes on will be controlled by something else. Really, all I care about is whether there is voltage or there isn't voltage. So anyone who's au fait with computers will be able to see that this um, very quickly becomes just using binary to address um, which motor I want. So I can redraw this here and I can say A, B, C with my 0, 1, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I can say that will be zero, 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 one. So if I want to, for example, uh, let's say I've got one, two, three, four, and all the way up to, you know, eight, eight motors. So I've got one to eight or zero to seven. Let's keep it consistent. Uh, zero to seven motors. And I've got power coming in here and I want that power to, say, go to motor number five, then I need to put some voltage on pin A, but not on pin B and pin C, and then I can pass the data lines through here. But because, say, um, the fifth motor, I haven't got it drawn here, but let's say there's five motors, it's the, uh, let's say this one's number five, because this one's the one that's getting the power, that's the only one that's going to be listening to these data lines. So effectively, with this uh, method here, I can have three data lines for what we'll call the um, for motor selector. And then I can have another four lines for the uh, motor, uh, motor motion. So with seven data lines, I can control up to eight motors properly. Um, and that's a hell of a lot of an improvement um, from needing, if you wanted to control eight motors and you wanted four on each, then you're going to have, need 32 data points, which I don't believe there are 32 data points that um, can come out of this anyway. So then I'd be getting into multiple uh, Raspberry Pis. But because this has got enough on here, I could, that, I could actually run, so that would be eight motors, so with seven, so seven, 14, 21, I could easily run off this in fact i think it's got 29 outputs so i could easily run four groups of eight motors uh, which would be 32 motors um all off of one machine um which is fantastic that's some cost saving there already so let me explain a little bit about how um the raspberry pi 
he's actually going to talk to my computer downstairs. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about it now because uh, later in the series I will be coding this and you'll see how all that works. But to give you a, um, a brief overview, basically I'm going to have a, uh, a computer, maybe my computer downstairs, maybe another Raspberry Pi, who knows, maybe one of the Raspberry Pis that's running the motors can also do it. Um, and that's going to be our server, okay? And what we're going to have is um, something that's called a state. So I'm going to say, let's say we've got my Marshall JCM800 and there's six knobs on that. So we're going to have um, K0, which is our first knob, K1, K2, K3, K4, K5. And our state of that, let's say I want that at, um, let's say they go from 1 to 10. So I'm going to call that 0 0.5, which actually means 5. So all of our range is going to be between 0 to 1. Um, so 1 is the highest it can be, and 0 is the lowest that the knob can be. So at 0 0.5, it will be at 50% or at 5 out of 10, depending on how your scale works. So in Spinal Tap, their knobs go up to 11. Well, in this, our knobs go up to 1, which to me seems much more sensible. Uh, so let's say we've got some uh, random numbers here on this, 0 0.6, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.1. Okay, so let's say that's our um, array of numbers that are saying where the knobs are meant to be on the amp. Well, that can be packaged up into a piece of information, probably sent by um, something like JSON. And that can be sent to the server and say that's, so this, is, this would be our front end. So our software that we use our mouse to change the knobs would basically send the state to the server and say, this is what we want the knobs to be on this particular unit. And then our little Pi here is retrieving, let's say every quarter of a second or something, it's retrieving this new state. And it looks at it and says, what's my current state? And what's the difference between the two? So if my knob is at 0.7 and the new state that you want is at 0.5, then that means I need to bring K0 back by minus, well, I need to add minus 0.2 to it to get from 0.7, which is where we're at, at the moment, to 0.5. And you can see it can go through each knob and work out what it needs to do. And then the Pi can then say, well, knob zero is on, you know, let's say the, uh, the motor, motor zero. So we're going to address motor zero with the power, and then we'll send the data lines to spin the number of, um, the number of uh, increments it needs to go down from 0 0.7 to 0 0.5. Um, and it's just a flow of information where the front end will tell the server what it wants to be, and then the Raspberry Pi will look at what it is, and the difference between what it wants to be, and then address the correct motors to turn. Um, I'm not going to go into any more details about that now, because we'll code that and we'll try various different ways and um, look at the efficiency of all sorts of different methods. But that's the basics of how I'm going to do that. Now, as you could imagine, um, in the same way that it works with the amps, as I mentioned earlier, it can work with pedals the same way. Now, this is a 1974 Dynacomp, which I would not let out on the road because it would be trashed it's even got its original full warranty here um but i could see myself being willing to pull these knobs off there's a little screw there to pull the knobs off and fit um a, a mount obviously not this mount because this was made for a marshal but a, a little two knob mount on top of it so that the knobs could be turned uh, by robotics and then that way I could use my 74 Dynacomp that's still almost as perfect as the day it was bought in its bag um, without fear of it being trashed. And that's, um, that's all very good, but I also need to be able to switch it on and off. And the last thing I want to do is make something that turns a pedal on and off. So that's where the final stage of the plan, I say final stage, I might end up doing that earlier than some other bits. It all depends on when the components turn up. Um, but that brings me through to one of the stages of the plan, shall I say, what I'm thinking of as the final stage, which is to have a switching system for my pedals. Um, I'll keep this example simple because I actually want to end up doing this with 14 pedals. 
But um, think about those switches that I was talking about earlier, those digitally controlled switches um, that have got uh, eight pins and uh, three address pins, and then it can connect um, whatever's going into there to one of these, depending on the voltage on A, B, and C. I'll number these just to make it easy. Six and seven, lovely. Um, so this is our little switch. Um, and the data will flow in there and out one of those depending on the voltages on A, B, and C. Now I can use this to um, decide what pedal I want to put in a uh, position at any time. So if I was going to have, let's say I'm only doing it with four pedals, I could have uh, pedal one, um, pedal one going into there. Now forget for the moment that each pedal has actually got two leads that will come out of each size. So whatever I draw here will need to, need to be multiplied by four times. But if, um, if I've got sort of pedal one going into pin zero and I've got pedal two going into pin one, pedal three and pedal four going into there, and then this one here will be a bypass, um, I can have a signal going in there and then I can choose which pedal I want to send that signal to by um, a digital switch down here, which is the same as earlier. You just put a voltage, the correct uh, voltages and the correct combination across the A, B and C, and you will pick which switch you want. Now, if I had four of these, then I'm covering the four different wires that need to go in and out of a pedal. Now, when I get another one here, which will actually be the pedal coming into each of the uh, pins and then coming out that way, even though it will be the same, it will be A, B and C that addresses it. Um, so that makes it really easy to put any pedal I want in the first switch. But then I can also duplicate these four. There'll be four of these. So if we, um, if we call it sort of like plus and minus, and then we've got input and output in the circuit, we'll actually have um, two wires going into the pedal and two wires coming out of the pedal. And each one of those will be the positive and negative for each of those. Um, if I then duplicate this up um, a number of times, uh, then I can pick any pedal I want or none of the pedals on or, all, or a pedal in every single position in any combination in any order I want. Now, I can't use eight pedals in, uh, in one of these uh, setups because obviously I do need one to go to the, um, to go to the amp eventually. So if you imagine it like this, um, one of these here with the four different circuits for the ins and outs of a pedal and, a, and an eight-way switch. If I represent that in this symbol here, so I've got kind of like a four things in one. Um, apologies again for my drawing. Um, I could have multiple of these, but each one of these will need to have an exit point to the amp. So um, I would only be able to run seven pedals in because there needs to be a line that goes directly to the amp. And all of these will have a... Um, an output to the amp because obviously at any point I wish I hadn't done that now at any point um, I could only want two pedals on which means it exits to the amp here so if I get seven pedals for these and then I build an exact copy of it I can have 14 pedals in my rig in two sets of seven which you can change the order on and if we have a look at how this would um, actually get wired up to a Raspberry Pi well, each of these would require three data lines because if we go back to our previous page here, this um, four-way switch uh, system, each of these will all have the same um, data lines going in because when this is switched to five, I'd also want this and this and this switched to five, um, which makes it really easy. So if I'm doing seven um, pedals, let's say, I want to do seven pedals, then it's uh, seven times three. So we end up with 21 data lines that need to control a single sort of block of pedals. Um, so that's one Raspberry Pi. Now there are some things that I could do to um, make that more efficient. I also really want to put a switch on there so um, I can decide which amp selector, otherwise I'm going to have the outputs of all of these and there's going to be noise from the ones that aren't being used, just being fed back to the amp. So um, there's other bits and pieces that I need to give some overhead for and, and there are some things that maybe we'll explore trying to um, reduce the amount of data lines that we needed to um, control the uh, switching system. So to summarize, what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to have an amp, uh, which let's say for this example, has got six knobs on it. I'll probably start my Supro that's got two, but um, it will have a mount like this on it, 
which will have motors which will be controlled by a Raspberry Pi and then I will have a pedal switching system with 14 pedals in two groups of seven which need to be fully automatable so I need to have all the knobs on all of those 14 pedals uh, turnable plus um, I need to be able to turn them all on and off and in within their two banks of seven I want to be able to change the order or do whatever I want with that um, and I want this to be all automated um, and a piece of software at the front end so that I can control it all from downstairs um, and the final piece of the puzzle I know I said earlier the final piece but um, the last thing that I'd really like to do and I don't know whether it's practical or not but I did start messing around with building myself um, some microphone mounts uh, 3d printing some microphone mounts um, with the idea that these have got holes I don't know if you can see you can see the holes there and there'd be rails that would go through here and this here could slide left to right and would have some kind of spring and some kind of cable that would be on a motor which would pull it that way and then as you release the motor the spring would pull it back the other way uh, and that could have a microphone on it which uh, so you could move the microphone position across the front of the speaker again all automated and all recallable because once you get a sound you like you can save the state of your guitar rig uh, and recall it at any time and, and just put it all back. Uh, if it had multiple amps in the rig, um, I could have relays that turn on and off each amp. I could have mics on each amp. And the, the sky's the limit with this. We could we could go on. So you can see it's quite a project. I think that doing it on a, on a video um, is actually going to encourage me to keep going um, and keep doing it. And I hope you will find it interesting watching it. So uh, I think that's enough for the introduction video. I'm going to wait for some parts to arrive. Um, and the next one, I'll probably be uh, talking through building some of the bits and pieces for the amp, um, the 3D printing of them, and uh, yeah, making all of that work in a lot more detail because I've kind of already done that. Um, I can't start the pedal array until various uh, things turn up. And with the post situation from foreign countries at the moment, that could be a few weeks. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, great. I'll see you in the next video. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.